So we had here one of the first public demonstrations in support of this administration. Is the administration under siege, in Absolutely. your view? 100%. He is fighting the deep state. He is fighting the rhinos. He is fighting, of course, the anarchist left. He is fighting the resistance and the never Trumpers. He is literally taking it. I would say that he is kind of like the proverbial uh, human embodiment of Israel. He's got enemies on all sides. And then the Red Sea is behind him. You know, he is, he is truly fighting for the people. And it just makes him all the more of our champion because we see what he's dealing with and battling day in, day out, and he's not giving up. And when he wins in 2020, you know, they will have to get used to an epic loss again. And I quite frankly can't wait. You mentioned Israel as uh, an example of being under attack from all sides. Yes. But May 14th, uh, America, this White House will finally uh, announce the opening of the American embassy in Jerusalem. And of course, we have the uh, Iranian nuclear deal, which the Iranians today are coming out and saying, if you, uh, if you uh, don't uh, renew it, uh, we will come out and uh, accelerate even faster our nuclear weapons program. What's going on in the Middle East, and, and how safe do you feel this administration can manage it? I feel a lot safer under President uh, Trump than I ever did under that pansy Obama okay. because he, uh, unlike Obama, he's actually not in bed with Iran. He's not in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. He is someone who's actually going to fight for America and also fight for uh, Israel. As a Christian, it's my duty to stand up and fight for Israel, make sure that they're not being uh, able to be attacked without someone standing up for them. And so given that we as a country under Obama gave them half a billion in nukes. I'm not surprised that they're thinking that they can try to attack us. But that's why we elected President Trump, to be a pit bull, a bulldog, you know, to take the fight to our enemies before they can take it to us. How do you feel about uh, demagogues in the black community ex exploiting? Do you have some feelings about that? Uh, I don't think I have enough time. Maxine Waters, oh, for instance. Gosh, why do you have to say that name? The anti-Semite, uh, Louis Farrakhan, oh, and, and, uh, and Tony Mohammed. I was having a good day. I was having a good day. Oh, gosh, screwy Louis Farrakhan. Oh, my gosh, that hateful anti-Semite. Yeah, the, the satanic Jews. Yeah, okay. Um, how about the satanic Louis? This man has led so many black people astray. So, so many of them. And like idiotic fools, they buy into his propaganda and his demagoguery, and he needs to be shut down immediately. Uh -huh, really? He is a dangerous parasite. They say there's over, over 40 Muslims now running for office, all on the Democratic line. What's happening to the Democrat Party? Well, we have Obama to thank for that. Um, Thank you, Obama. Uh, as far as Islam, it was banned in this country uh, in 1952. It was never repealed and for good reason. There should not even be, quite frankly, Muslims practicing freely in the U.S. since it was, in fact, banned. But again, who am I? I'm, I'm just a constitutionalist who happens to love my country and wants to keep it safe from the tyranny that is Sharia law. But, you know, maybe that's just me. Have the Democrats exploited racism? They have 100% exploited racism, and they're exploiting even the Muslim people pretending to be on their side. They have no idea uh, just how badly, well, they do. I'd say they do know just how badly they are adversely affecting the American people uh, via their policies because America completely 100% conflicts with Sharia law. It completely conflicts with democratic policy, free independence, free market, entrepreneurship, individuality, get up and go, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. These are our founding fathers' principles that they interwoven into our constitution. And the Democrats have literally taken, not, not pruning shears, but a torpedo to our once sacred held constitution, the text. You know, we, we, we cannot even recognize our country just from 20 years ago. I mean, at least back then people knew what the heck their gender was. Now everything's just beyond just crazy. Uh, is it racist to not support the Democrat Party in its current incarnation? It's racist to support the Democratic Party. How do you mean? Well, think about it. They were the party of slavery, were they not? They were the party of the KKK, which they founded right after they lost the Civil War. Okay. They are the party of the Jim Crow era of the South. And they are the party of the fourth implementation of slavery, and that is the welfare state, which completely took a nuclear bomb to black people. Destroying the family unit was how they were able to destroy us. 
If you look at inner cities, Watts, Detroit, Crenshaw, places that have been completely, utterly ruined by liberal ideology, it affects black people the most. They strip us of our individuality, our independence, our ability to what we once did, pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. At one point, the black community, socially, academically, economically, the family unit was on par, if not ahead, of the white bracket. And they said, well, we can't have that. We can't have them actually succeeding and excelling. We have to try to give them a little bit of power, but not enough to where it makes a difference. And those were LBJ's words exactly. In addition to I'll have those words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. What word? The uh, a specific word that starts with an N is what he used. Uh -huh. I'll have those N words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. Those were LBJ's actual words, a Democrat. In other words, he's alleging that he'd have the blacks hooked on welfare. Are they? Yeah. One, I mean, we're less than 13% of the population. We're probably now in single digits. I mean, we murder ourselves in the womb. We murder ourselves in the streets. We drink and, and drug ourselves to death. Uh, we're, we're probably down to, I would say, maybe 10, 9%. And yet Black Lives Matter, I call bull crap. Um, and the majority of us are on welfare. The majority of us are not some kind of assistance. However, thankfully, thanks to President Trump, our economic situation has improved you know, drastically. We have not seen such high levels of employment since the 70s, and we have no one but Donald J. Trump, our president, to thank for that. It was not Obama. It was not even either Bush. It wasn't even Reagan. It was Donald John Trump, our president. Uh -huh. Are Republicans racist by nature? Republicans are the very antithesis of racist by nature. If you're a true constitutionalist, conservative Republican, you are by very nature someone who believes in equality of start, not equality of outcome, diversity of thought, not diversity of skin color or gender. Those are things you cannot control. There is no achievement in having, you know, lady parts versus male parts yeah. or having dark skin versus white skin. Those yeah. are things that should not allow you the presidency. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But, but if Republicans are for less government spending and so many minorities are reliant on welfare benefits, then are, uh, are, are the minorities patriotic? You know what, I can't speak for an individual whom I haven't met, but I would say, you know, the Bible says, judge you on your fruits. And I'd have to say, based on the fruits I've seen that look pretty darn sour, a lot of, you know, black people and otherwise minorities, I wouldn't be surprised to not find much patriotism there. They allowed themselves to get hooked on the government train. They allowed themselves to basically be bought and sold and paid for by the Democrats because they're the party of big government, so they got them hooked on big government, because then who will they vote for? The party of big government. So they're now on the political slave plantation. When they were once picking cotton, now they're pulling levers to vote for Nancy Pelosi. And Maxine Waters. Ugh, gosh. And Maxine Waters. Frederica Wilson, Sheila Jackson Lee, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris. These are all people who disgrace me as a human being, disgrace me as an American, and the ones who are female disgrace me as a woman. And they disgrace me as a, as, as a minority. As a brown-skinned woman, every single one of them disgraces me. And I'm sick of it. They do not speak for me. They do not speak for the, I would say, very, very large growing number of black conservatives who are waking up and realizing this crap isn't working anymore. It never worked. We have given the Democratic Party decades of loyalty at the voting box, and we have gotten zero in return. And now they're waking up. They're truly becoming woke versus the ones that are still asleep, who I pray will wake up soon. Thank you very much. Good.